everyone, it's Karen. Okay, so I don't know why, but sometimes I subscribe to people and then I just kind of ignore their videos, not on purpose, it's just you can't watch everyone you love. And then you like rediscover them, like they're brand new to you, but you've actually been subscribed to them forever. And one of those people for me is Jean Bookish Thoughts. I have been watching loads of her videos lately and I don't even know how long I've been subscribed to her, but I know it's been a very long time and all of a sudden I find them so soothing and cozy and lovely. Um, she did some videos over the past year that I absolutely loved. One of the things that she did last year was she broke her reading into genres and then she did the top 10 of that genre. And so when I looked on Storygraph, it said that my top category that I tend to read the most of is literary fiction. I decided to show you my top 10 literary fiction of all time. The first one is East of the Mountains by David Gutterson. And I just adored this book. So this is the story of a doctor who has a terminal um, illness. He's kind of like this type A sort of person, doctor, always planning, always doing, always whatever, all the things. And now he's terminally ill. Um, so he decides to kind of visit his family and head west. And while he head, while he's going west, um, he is actually going to find a spot and um, kill himself so that he does not have to just go through the anguish of dying from a terminal illness. You kind of follow him on his journey of just reconnecting with all the people that have, he has touched their life and they have touched his life. Um, and just seeing like what an impact one life has on so many other people. It was just such a beautiful story and such an amazing like journey for him emotionally but also like physically he's literally on a journey as much as he is in a journey on a journey like within himself the next one you have heard me talk about a lot it's my favorite Anne Patchett novel and it is State of Wonder this follows a scientist who needs to go into the Amazon because her scientific partner has just died he went into the Amazon trying to follow up on this drug that this company had been putting so much money into and this doctor scientist lady in charge of doing the research is horrible at communication. He went trying to see like, hey, what's up? Like, can we move this process along? Ended up dying and now his partner is going after him to get whatever remains there may be of him Actually, I think he's already been buried, so she's mainly after, like, his physical, um, th like, things that he brought with him. Um, and she also needs to kind of follow up on this doctor and be like, hey, let's, let's move the process along. It is so amazing. There's so many different, like, plot lines running through the story, but it is still literary fiction, I would say. And I love the ending so much because I love like kind of ambiguous endings where you have to kind of make up your own mind about what happened. Um, so if that is your jam, then you might like this book. If that is not your jam, you'll probably be really upset by the ending, but it was so good. Just like loads of like strong female power and all that sort of thing, the smart scientists and the Amazon and yeah, it just, I loved all the vibes about this one. The next one I've talked about so much that I almost decided to leave it out just because I've talked about it so much. But if you're sick of me talking about this, I will say that any other book by this author is also equally as good. And that is The Sacrament by Olaf Olafsson. Um, so this one, it's basically about a nun who previously had research, uh, researched and investigated like a sex abuse um, accusation. That's over and done with. It's been years. She's just living her life. And all of a sudden a letter arrives to her that there's a part of the story that she has not been informed of and like someone wants to talk to her. So this flows back and forth between the two times, the present day when someone has written her a letter and she needs to go investigate. 
and the past investigation when she was initially looking into the sex abuse um, scandal. And it's just so amazing. It's set in Iceland, which makes it extra amazing. And I just loved it so much. And again, the ending made this whole book for me. Okay, the next one I realized maybe I should not have included in this list because it is historical fiction. Um, and that will be another list, but so sorry. It is Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. Now I know I probably should read her other books, The Visit from the Goon Squad and Candy House and all those, um, but I've only read this one. But I love it a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, this is basically about this girl. Um, she lives only with her dad and it's like back in the day, maybe like the 30s or so when she's growing up, and her dad is obviously involved in some sort of shady business. Like they're always like meeting with these mysterious people and mysterious situations and all that sort of thing. Um, and you don't really know what her dad does. You just have this ominous feeling that he's in shady business. Anyway, it kind of follows the girl as she grows up and the stuff that she gets involved in, which again, um, would be during World War II, and it's also like strong female sort of vibes. So yeah, I love this one so much. My cousin was visiting me when I was reading it, and I basically like really wanted time to read, so we had silent reading time. <laughs> the next one I've talked about loads as well, as um, you know, many of these, and that is Mouth to Mouth by Antoine Wilson. Uh, this gave me Gentleman in Moscow vibes because basically this tells the story of a guy who is waiting in an airport for his plane which has been delayed and he runs into this other guy that he knew from high school or college. I can't remember. I think it was college. Um, they're just acquaintances. They were never friends but the other guy decides to take this guy to the VIP lounge which he has access to and to tell him a story. So I think the part that reminds me of a gentleman in Moscow is just like this enclosed sort of setting like they're stuck in the airport you know and just the idea of someone sitting down to tell you a story is just like a beautiful lost art and um I loved it so much. It's a novella, so it would be very good for Shorty September, which is coming up very quickly. Um, but yeah, again, same. Ooh, I think I have a pattern. I'm realizing, like, what do I love about these books? Shocking ending. I loved this. Okay, the next one is a new to me author who I plan to read his other stuff, although he doesn't have very much other stuff. And that is The Blue Tent by Richard Gwynn. Is that how you say it? Someone from Wales, correct me. Um, this is a Welsh book about this guy who has inherited this home um, from his late aunt. And basically the reason that she gives him the home and the part that's most important to her about the home is the library. And he is required to keep the library exactly as it is. He is given these beautiful instructions, which I should have underlined or marked so I could quickly reference them but basically he needs to journey through each book one at a time and each book will lead to another and will help him understand or something like that it, it was worded beautifully and so he's in this house just kind of living a cozy life he goes on walks in nature he reads the books in this library and um one day a tent arrives on the very edge of his property it's technically not on his property it's his neighbors but um someone is basically camped out and he's like um no please like this is my property like what are you doing here which is not his property but anyway he is trying to kind of spy on them and he goes for a walk in the woods and is kind of hidden by the trees and sees a woman coming out of the tent and it is quite clear that she can see him even though he is in a part where he feels like he's disguised by the trees she goes in to his house he watches her go into his house and he's like what the heck like who gave you permission to go into my house so he leaves the woods goes to his house to confront this woman she's in the kitchen and she basically says like um shall we do introductions or shall we have a cup of tea first he begins this 
kind of relationship with this woman, not in a, not in a relationship each sort of way, but just like they connect their paths cross. And, um, yeah, it's just like, what the heck? But then pretty soon this other guy comes out of the tent. And so it's just like this tent where these people are just coming out of it. Like it's a portal or something. And yeah, it's, it's not as weird as it seems, um, but it was very good. And there were some themes in here that I think a lot of people would particularly enjoy. However, I feel like if I say them, it might be a spoiler. And at the end, it was one of those books where I'm like, I need to talk to someone about this. And luckily, Heather had said the same thing on her channel, which is why I picked it up in the first place. And so we discussed it. Okay, the next one is Room. Don't watch the movie. Don't watch the trailer for the movie. It gives everything away. This is a story told from the perspective of a little boy, which makes it super interesting. It's by Emma Donahue, who I love. Um, and basically, this little boy has grown up in a room because his mom was kidnapped. And uh, basically, this guy took advantage of her she ended up pregnant and her and her son have been trapped in this room for quite some time so that her child has only known this room and so he's telling the story his language is very interesting um just because the room is his whole life experience next one is also kind of historical fiction oh i'm gonna have to rethink this okay anyway Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. This book um, starts in the present, I feel like, if I remember correctly, and basically people are at this former school or school for um, people that have gotten in trouble with the law or whatever. It's kind of like a reform school and they are uncovering bones and basically it's kind of a journey back and like the two timelines are going back and forth but mostly it's in the past about what the heck happened and like why are there bones at this school like um the part that made this really powerful is that it's based on a true story and I have read not based on a true story based on a true school and I have read a book that is a nonfiction account of what happened at that school. So definitely very hard to read and very devastating, especially since you know it's real, but just an incredible, incredible story. Elizabeth Strout's My Name is Lucy Barton. She is most well known for Olive Kittrich, but this is the book I loved the most. Um, I deeply, deeply connected to it. Basically, it is a story, and again, it's short. I don't know if it's novella length, but I feel like you could do this for Shorty September. Um, this is a story of a woman who is in the hospital. I don't know that you ever find out why she's in the hospital, but she has a husband, she has kids, they're at home. She's kind of alone in the hospital. Um, and all of a sudden, she wakes up and her mother is on the foot of her bed, and she has this estranged relationship with her mother um, and it is just kind of how they reconnect in this situation that is not ideal, obviously, of her being in the hospital. Um, and just this weird kind of juxtaposition of, like, their lives and how they're just, like, thrown together in this situation of her being sick. And they just, like, go through memories and they tell stories. And it's kind of, like, how they heal without really ever talking about what made them estranged. Um, so yeah, I think I really like that, the like hidden kind of changes, the subtle changes of their relationship just through discussions while she's in the hospital and how you can see love in many different forms. Finally, we have one that a lot of people did not like and that is Unsheltered by Barbara King Oliver. Now, I have to admit, I have loved everything that Barbara King Oliver has written. This one is a bit special to me because it was the first time I met her. I met her for um, the signing of this book. And um, I also loved it because of all the political references in it, which is exactly why most people hated it because they felt it was very heavy handed. 
Um, this is a story of a family and just their lives as they are kind of living in this crumbling down house and the crumbling down house is kind of like a symbol of the other ways their lives are kind of crumbling or not really going so hot and then in addition it kind of tells the story of the town at a different time period which involves like a teacher who is in trouble for teaching darwin sort of things um there's a scientist in here that was actually a real woman and yeah just really really strong female power but also connecting to like current events and the stuff that has been happening in our world. Those are my 10 favorite literary fiction. I am curious what you guys would put towards the top of your list. What do you think of the ones on my list? Have you read them and loved them or read them and hated them or want to read them? And then also like, what would you put on your list? I would love to see either comments about your favorite literary fiction so that I can read them or maybe a video response because I think that would be super, super amazing. I hope you guys have a good day and I will see you later.